Welcome to the Dice Tower, a video cast all about the world of board games and the people who play them. This is the 2010 edition of our annual Top 100 Board Games of All Time, featuring the Vassal family. Tower. We've been talking about our top 100 games, uh, which again, in case this is your first one that you've seen, we've played, uh, well I've played thousands of games, Melody's played hundreds, so being in our top 100 is a pretty big deal. These are interesting games that we think that you'll like, mine from uh, my perspective and Melody's from a 10 year old's perspective. Let's get to the games. Number 85 is Calabunga. Calabunga is a game in which you're playing cards in the middle of the table to make a surfing number go up or down. So let's say it's 38, I would add 2 to it, or 28 here, I would add 6 to it, or, and eventually once you get to a certain number, then it starts coming down. So players are making this wave number, they don't want to make it go higher than 30 really, well if they do, then it starts dropping down, or if they make it go below 10, then it starts coming back up. Now what players are doing is, Whenever someone manages to make a number that has an obstacle card that they have in their hand, they can play that obstacle card and take a cow pawn or the person who played the wave card. So you're basically trying not to play one of these so that someone else can play their numbers. Now you don't know what numbers they have, but you will know the numbers as the game progresses. So this is actually a really good game for counting numbers and going back and forth, but as the game progresses and you know what uh, numbers have already been played, it can be quite a bit of fun. Because you're adding and subtracting numbers from the um, the number <laughs> that you already have, and I really like the artwork, especially the cow ponds. They're really cute with the sunglasses. Number eighty-five, Space Alert. Space Alert is a game that came on my top one hundred last year, very high actually, and I really, really enjoy this game. Dropped down farther on the list, but I still like it. Uh, it. It can be chaotic, and because of that, and because of the necessity to have a CD or an MP3 being played means it can't get played as much as I'd like it to, but it's still a blast to play. It's a cooperative game that's played in real time. you got to play now, make your decisions now. You're working together as a team, and you've got to keep your spaceship from crashing or being destroyed by aliens, which is much harder than you might think. A lot of fun, a good effort by this designer, Space Alert. Number 84 is Twisted Fish. Twisted Fish is basically a version of Go Fish. You have different fish that are in the deck and you are trying to find all the fish of one color. And so you'll ask someone on their turn, do you have a purple shrimp? And if they do, they have to give it to you. And if they don't, then everyone knows that you don't have a purple shrimp and maybe you have the other colors of shrimp. And so there's some interesting things there as each set is worth different points and there's a few special cards in. It's basically a, sem a semi-zany form of Go Fish. I like this game because you're trying to find all the colors of one fish or all the fish of one color. And I definitely like this game because it's very similar to Go Fish and I love Go Fish. Number 84, the Ferranter. <laughs> That's a hard one. Rarely has a game come across that has just been so much fun. This is another new addition to the list, and this is another one that as soon as I saw the game, I thought, wow, does this have a chance? Because, I mean, you have the feel of being Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider or whatever your favorite adventure person is. That's who you are in this game as you go through this uh, three-dimensional game where walls are closing up, boulders blowing down. I mean, that this game was marketed by Milton Bradley, come on now. Fun, fun game. Probably geared more towards the younger set than the adults, and yet I still like it a ton. The Adventurers. Number 83, The Rolling Gang. The Rolling Gang is one of the most unique games I've ever seen, in that it uses clothespins here around the side of the box to keep track of the score. The board box is a magnet, and there's little magnet pieces that go in it to make hurdles, and then it's kind of like a game of croquet as you're rolling a ball around, trying to get that ball to go in between different animals. 
because you'll be turning over cards of these animals to show which animals you have to go from to the next one. So one person will turn over and say, okay, dog, and so you're moving around as fast as you can. Everyone else is, is finding you. You can also do what Melody's doing here, and that's hitting the ball around with the stick. So there's different variations. You can roll it around with the box, you can hit it with the stick, and you can have a t time limit. The game does come with a timer. And so it's fast and furious fun. Might even be too intense for younger people, but it's certainly a unique game. I like this game because you're rolling the ball around, trying to get them through the animal's legs. It's really cool of how you um, keep paper clips to keep your score. And I really um, think it's really cool that the board is made out of magnet so that the animals can stick to it. Number 83, War to Rome. You know, despite the poor packaging of the game, and, you know, the, some people hate the artwork, although I think the artwork is just great. The funny, cart, you know, Roman uh, cartoonish artwork almost reminds me of, you know, those, the, the, the comic strips I used to read about the, the Romans. Uh, but this game has been on my list for five years, and it will likely stay there because Glory to Rome is one of the first games that took the idea of using a card for multiple ideas and did it well. Uh, you can use a card for building a building. You can use the card to be the building. You can use the card as a special character that gives you an ability. You're constantly vying with your opponents. There's multiple ways to win, more than just getting the most points. Uh, it has a fairly steepish learning curve. I mean, not, not too terribly, but for what it is. But once you know how to play it, Glory to Rome is a really terrific, fun game. Number 82. Zaken. Well, there's not much to Sakin Zaken. You're basically trying to find the socks that are the same three colors in the same three places. For example, these two socks here may look similar, but you'll notice that the tops of them are yellow and green. So we're looking for two socks, and as soon as you find them, you have a match. And I'm trying to find a pair to show you right now, but it's really that confusing because there's that much going on. All right, Melody found a pair. Here they are. The yellow, white, red, and green socks. So it's basically an advanced memory match with close pins as scoring tokens. And a little sock monster. <laughs> I like this game because it's similar to the memory match, but also I like it of how you're trying to match the socks. <laughs> and I really like the cute little furry monster that you get when you win the game. Um, and I like how they keep score by doing clothespins. Number 82, Why Did the Chicken? Why Did the Chicken is a game that's been on my list for a long time because it's one of those party games that as soon as I played it, I loved it a lot because it really inspired creativity. Now, the reason it's dropped down from where it once was in the top 100 is because there's so many other party games that have come out which have encouraged this creativity so its competition is more crowded. I might want to play this game, or Funny Business, or some other variation, but that doesn't mean it's still not a great game. And why did the chicken, which simply asks a random riddle, like, why did the priest marry the woodchuck? And you have to come up with some kind of weird answer to that. You know, why did the roadrunner cross the road? Whatever your, you know, random riddle is, you can write that as many answers as you want, and then one person, the judge, votes on the answers that they think are the funniest. And as the game progresses, the humor becomes more meta, uh, it starts piling on top of each other, it becomes a very, very funny game. Why did the chicken? Number 81, Sleeping Queens. In Sleeping Queens, players are trying to get as surprised, as many queens as they can. You don't know which queens are where, and each queens are worth certain amounts of points. This one's worth 15, and they're really ridiculous queens. But they'll be doing that with a deck of cards that they'll be drawing from on their turn, and you can take play a card. Now, the best card to play from your deck is a king. Because play a king simply lets you take a queen. But you can take play a knight to steal a queen from someone else, unless that other person plays a dragon to stop you. And there's other things. You can put a queen back to sleep. You can play a joker, which acts as any... Well, you turn over the top card and see what it happens. You get rid of cards from your hand, because your hand's going to fill up with cards. By discarding cards, you can get rid of one card from your hand and draw another card, or you can get rid of a pair of the same kind, or you can get three cards that equal an additional card. So, for example, I know it sounds confusing, but if I have my hand here, two, two, and four, I can get rid of them, because two plus two plus four is gone. So the game teaches addition, while at the same time, 
the luck of the draw is you grab the different queens. I like this game because you're trying to pick up queens that look cool and also kings. Well, um, I really like this game because you're picking up queens to get the points and also discarding and drawing cards, um, trying to find kings or any other thing that will help you. And I just like this game. I have no idea why she likes this game because it's a really terrible game. No, it's not! Number 81. Return to the Heroes. Return to the Heroes, I don't even have the box anymore because I have the expansion for it under the shadow of the dragon and everything fit nicely into that box. But one of the big reasons I like this game is because of the artwork. If you look at each of these and you put these together to make this gigantic board that you're crawling across, it reminds you somewhat of Magic Realm, except with actually good artwork. Uh, it's a fun game where players make a party of adventurers. It's almost a little Eurozized, which is why I like another game on my list a little bit better. You'll see that one coming up. But I think Return of the Heroes does an excellent job at just conveying the magic and the wonder of going out and exploring. It actually is a pick up and delivery game where you're going and completing a quest and moving over here and getting back here and trying to be the fastest person to move around the board. But it has a good sense of adventure and one I like quite a bit, Return of the Heroes. Tune into our next show for more Top 10 Gaming Goodness, or check out our website at www.thedicetower.com for more reviews and Top 10 lists. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.